Meow. So I got part way through this drawing and I was putting on the tabby stripes and I thought, hey, this would be a good place to stop and then just start it again in a tutorial. I've had some people requesting learning more about drawing tabby stripes. So the one thing I want you to notice about the tabby stripes here is they're going around the contour of the arm. They're going around the, where the arm, the roundness of the arm. And I ponder a lot. You know, don't be in any rush to make the next stroke. Although that does work sometimes. Um, yeah, make sure you have lots of pondering time in your art. We need time to think things out sometimes. Or feel things out, I think, is more the appropriate way that I go about it. Just deciding exactly how much I want here because I don't I want the the gesture, the suggestion of tabby stripes. I I I don't want to get hung up on doing it exactly like the photograph, which I'm not even showing here because um you know I'm trying to let go more of the photograph and I got the shape of the cat from that and now I just want to trust my gut and do what's right for the drawing. So as I'm drawing the tabby stripes, I'm shaping the arm. And here's where I'm kind of giving a suggestion of markings and I'm really working hard lately on uh, cats with markings um, other than tabby, like cats with patches and things, which is what this cat has color patches, spots, whatever you want to call them. I'm just trying to give a suggestion of those without filling them in. And I hope you follow along with me and, and learn with me about great ways to do patched cats, you know, without, without filling too much in. Less is more, um, but we have to choose carefully what our less is. So here I'm drawing kind of the hair sticking up over the chin, the chest hair sticking up over the chin, um, right under the chin there. And it would have worked out better, I'm sure, if I would have done that hair under the chin before I did the chin line. It would have looked more natural. So that's how our drawing really teaches us every time. There's always something that I take towards the next one. The only way you learn some things is by making mistakes. I don't even like to really use the word mistake. Um, it's just experience, trial and error. Feeling like I got a lot of black under that eye and I want to balance it off with this one. So I'm just kind of trying a little trick here. Just an idea. I see it. So between those two eyes, each one has a darker edge area um, that I just pointed to. And um, I feel like that kind of balances it off a bit because I, it, that way it makes it look like I meant to make the other one darker in one spot. Now I'm kind of etching in that nose patch on the cat. Nose patch and tabby stripes. I really like the expression I captured on this kitty here. Again, those markings. I like that. I 
give it a suggestion of that nose line. A hint of nostrils. It's really easy to overdo it on the nostrils. Less is certainly more there. Because when we're looking at a cat from a distance, we don't focus right up on their nostrils. So um, putting, like really putting in detailed nostrils is, uh, in with a, a more simplistic drawing like this is gonna really overdo it. And you can pig nose your cat pretty easy. And just a suggestion here of the tabby stripes within the darker markings on this cat. Now here I'm trying to give the suggestion that that shoulder is pushed up against the, the jaw there. Just kind of loosely getting a suggestion of that darker patch on the on the top there. Just want to really get the gesture more than anything. This one still looks a little bit out of place. It looks like it's sticking out. So I think filling in with some more stripes might help. And I can get away with that too because it is kind of in where it would, where a shadow area would be. And that's part of that arm too. Don't want to overdo it on the face. But at the same time, usually my best learning comes from when I overdo something. It helps me learn where to stop. And that's one of the hardest things as an artist. Just getting some suggestions of hair on the chest there in the white areas. Just so we don't have a big empty void. And it, all those little marks act as wiggle lines too and add life to the drawing. Decided to fill that in with darker stripes again to make it look more like it's a patch than some extra foot sticking out there. You know, it still might look like an extra foot, but we're getting there. It's all a learning experience. Your next work is always your best work. Your best work is always your next work. I just want to aim for rhythm here now. I'm just allowing my lines to kind of flow together. So you see what I'm doing? Just watch my pen. Yeah, see that nice curve, that nice swing there. I feel like I did overdo this line a bit. A 
put a bit more in the way of tabby stripes. Trying to get a few scratchy lines in there to fill some of the open voids because the eye tends to be drawn to be drawn to that if we've got lots of um, activity going on in one area and then there's a big empty void it's pretty distracting. Carefully around the eye. Just little wiggle lines in there to help lead the eye around rhythm lines. Whatever you want to call it. It's what works for me. There we go again. Small things help, help the big picture. You gotta choose your details really carefully. We've got a Facebook group called Cat Drawing Art Workshop, so you are welcome to join if you are dedicated to drawing cats, and you will find the link for that in the description of this video below. Easy on the whiskers. Too many whiskers can easily weigh down the face. So now let's jump ahead to the signature. And I hope you subscribe. So we see you next time. We got lots more videos to come. So subscribe and turn on your notifications if you want to make sure you're going to see them. Thanks so much for watching. And we will see you next time.